so basically um, we have seen uh, we have discussed about a fourth state diagram approach for dynamical prediction whether a branch conditional branch will be taken or not and we have seen that this four state diagram is more efficient than a two test two state diagram for very complex programs now we will uh, start discussing a total different era of you know uh, computer uh, you know a pipelining version of computer that is still now all the different different type of situation that we have seen different type of uh, you know hazard that happened on a pipelining a special type of pipelining i will say why i am saying special because you see if i draw the basic diagram of a pipelining that still now we are working on that assume there is four stages fetch then decode then execute and then write back and you see whatever the instruction is we have not you know identified any difference among the instructions present in a you know computer system we have assumed that every instruction will start with this stage one first i mean i should not write fetch decode execute right back here it's better to you know numbering the stages because why i'm doing this you will realize it very soon so this is stage 1 stage 2 stage 3 stage 4 and we have basically seen that there is a you know unique responsibility of each and every stages during the execution of an instruction that stage 1 always fetch stage 2 always decode stage 3 always execute and stage 4 always write back the result that's all but you know in modern computer for a very complex pipeline architecture this is not true i mean the assumption that we have made that every stage has a unique responsibility and because of this assumption this type of pipeline is basically called static pipeline Why static pipeline? Why static mean? Static mean that it's fixed. The functionality of the stages are fixed. And it's defined that the instruction will go through stage 1 first, then will enter in stage 2, then to stage 3, then to stage 4. And came out of from the pipeline. There is no other, you know, version of uh, you can say uh, no other version of the trunk traverse of the instruction execution from one stage to other stages the connection of the stages are fixed that's why the pipeline is called static pipeline but in modern computer for a very complex pipeline architecture this static pipeline doesn't really exist what I mean to say is that there is no fixed functionality of the stages we have in the pipelining of the modern computer. A stage 1 can fetch, even can decode also. Stage 2 can say defetch as well as execute. I mean more than one functionality. And at the same point of time, there is no guarantee that every instruction in that modern computers will start from stage 1 
the instruction can start from stage 2 and end at stage 3. And the instruction can start from S1, then go to S2, then go to S4, then come to S3 and output from S3. It may happen. So any possibility may happen. Now if this type of situation arises, then obviously the functionality is not unique. The connection will no more unique. Then you cannot guarantee that stage 1 will not be connected with S3. I mean stage 3. It may be there depends on the requirement so if this situation happen that means there are more than one way of entering in the pipeline some instruction can enter through s1 some instruction can enter through s2 some instruction can output from s4 some instruction can output from s1 something like this so if so complex thing arises naturally what will happen you know then we cannot say that pipeline as a static pipeline anymore those type of pipeline is called dynamic pipeline so if this dynamic you know when the dynamic version will come in the pipeline naturally identifying hazard is going to be pretty difficult if we don't have a specific method to realize what will be the best you know time difference by which I can send the instructions one by one so that there will be no hazard then it will be pretty difficult to realize that pretty difficult to realize that uh, I mean, exactly how we can manage that dynamic pipeline. So let's start the topic for today is what we call <coughs> dynamic pipeline. Sorry. Now see, uh, we will try to realize this dynamic pipeline and the other necessary things with an example. So let's do one thing. Let's take a situation. Um, there is a, suppose we have a, some stages, stage 1, stage 2, stage 3, like that, so on. Okay. So suppose we have stage 1, stage 2, stage 3, stage 4, that's all. Okay, suppose we have these four stages, but the connection is definitely not unique. So, I can have, suppose there are two type of instruction, okay. So, two type of instruction executes in two different way. So, suppose one is X type of instruction. We will start from stage one will go to stage 2 from stage 2 it will go to stage 4 and from the stage 4 it will go to stage 3 
so stage 3 and uh, maybe I will have an output from stage 3. Okay. So this is X type of instruction and Y type of instruction will start from stage 2. It will uh, go to stage 3, from stage 2 to stage 3, from stage 3 it will go to stage 1. And from stage 1, I will get the output. Okay. So, that been form for its type of instruction. It is S1 to S2, S2 to S3, uh, S2 to S4, and S4 to S3. Okay, do one thing. Let's make it little more complex not only from S3, S3 to S1 and S1 to S2 and I will get output from S2 not S3 suppose ok let make it, make it little bit complex somehow I will get output from S2 output and y type of instruction will start from s2 it will go to s3 okay and uh, then from s3 it will go to s1 and from s1 it will go to s4 let's make it little more complex from s1 it will go to s4 uh, okay, do one thing. Uh, I don't need to write this because already S1 to S2 I have. So I can write, uh, I can write here from S4 I will get the output definitely y type of instruction and I can write from S3 to S1 and this then S1 to S2 again and S2 to S4 ok so if I have this two different type of instruction if some type of instruction is X type some is Y type and for X type of instruction the execution you know the execution uh, the stages that will be used in execution in this particular uh, order and for y type in this order so in this situation you see what will be the reservation table let's draw this so if we draw a reservation table for x type of instruction so i have four stages s1 s2 s3 s4 Let's draw the table first.
so and if I draw the corresponding blocks and so on. So uh, you see for the X type of instruction it is S1 to S2 to S4 to S3 like this S1, S2, S4, S3, S1, S2. That means this one first so x1 i am writing x1 means x type of first instruction okay then s2 then s4 then s3 okay then s2 right then s4 then s3 uh, then s1 then s2 then s1 then H2 so from this basically your you will get the output of the X1 but now why I have drawn this one I will show you very soon now you see a very interesting point here that is if I want that this x type of instruction will be entered in the pipelining so naturally what i can do i can try putting another instruction over here x2 let's draw it x2 the second instruction will obviously start from x2 here and The, in the fourth clock cycle, the X second instruction will execute X4, this one, okay. Then it, will execute, then it will basically execute this one page. I'm sorry, it's not X2. I should, it, I should write it X1. I had a mistake. And then they this S1, S2, S4, S3, right? S1, S2, S4, S3, then S1, S2. Then again S1, then S2. Fine. Now see if I Keep on doing in inserting one more pipe, one more I mean instruction. I'm as not I'm assuming that there is no data hazard. Okay, so just forget about data hazard right now. A different problem will arise over here. That is more important right now. That is let's see where it will arise. So if I keep on introducing third instruction, x3, then x3, then this will be x3 and then you see uh, it will be x3 am i correct s1 s4 s3 and then x3 then x3 here right fine for x4 x4 here it is x4 then x4 then x4 and x4 still it is okay sorry x4 so if you see that 
x1 and gap with x2 it is one clock cycle x2 and x3 gap it is again one clock cycle i mean the initialization of the instructions okay x1 with x2 one clock cycle x2 to x3 one clock cycle x3 to x4 the gap is one clock cycle but if i want to introduce x5 that mean after x4 if i want to introduce x5 putting one clock cycle will lead to what we call collision because you see that if i want to introduce immediately a after x4 it's not possible because at that time at the flip flop cycle the stage one is busy with x1 instruction so that mean from this diagram it is very clear that it is not even possible to start x5 before the ninth instruction and so on like this right so this is from this point we have to understand that that mean that what is the then then how you can say that what is the gap between initiation of two instruction in this dynamic pipeline that is what actually we have to find out we cannot say it's one so basically if you say gap between x4 and x5 you will see x4 started at 4 clock cycle and x5 started at 9 clock cycle the gap is basically 5 so for some instruction it is 1 for some instruction it is 5 then how we will realize that what is the best value of the clock cycle I mean the difference of the clock cycle that I should maintain common for all combination of instruction I mean x1 with x2 same x2 to x3 x3 to x4 and so on so that there will be no collision arises from this dynamic pipeline so this is what we have to find out so it's basically have a little bit long process long process means you have to identify something uh, you have to go through some keywords some uh, uh, terminology we have to understand so we will start doing that and solving a problem in the next class.